Group 6 for service delivery as new challenge. And for this category, we are basically looking at upcoming epidemics like Zika and Ebola, environmental, climatical changes, urbanization, the NCD epidemic, and emergence preparedness. Presenting on, be on behalf of the, of the groups, I'm called Rita Mtayoba. So for the upcoming HHSP5 proposed motto, we had some thoughts, and all of them are related and basically focusing on multi-sectoral collaboration for healthier population. And that is the main motto that we are proposing. And under it, we have other thoughts like community engagement for healthier population, all for health, one health for all, and the Swahili one to Tembe Pamoja, all of which relate to the major one, multi-sectoral collaboration for healthier population. On a bigger picture, we looked further and discussed on the growing population of Tanzania and basically understanding that Tanzania population is a younger population. Most of it are youth and adolescents and children. And we also focus on the threats, on the epidemics, understanding that there are Ebola outbreaks in the nearby countries. And so we'd really wish to have a community that is able to respond to epidemics when they occur and they can assist the health system. So the vision that we are proposing reads as follow, healthier, productive, and resilient population, which is conscious in epidemic, in emerging public health issues and climatic changes. On strategic direction, we are proposing main four themes or categories that we will focus into. The first one is on early warning, preparedness, response, and monitoring. And for early warnings, preparedness, response, and monitoring, basically focus on the threats, on the epidemics, like Zika and Ebola, the major emergencies that we are getting, for example, the recent Morogoro episode that happened. And in this area, we'll continue to strengthen the current system and make it more responsive and prepared for, to respond whenever there are outbreaks. The second strategic direction that we are proposing is community engagement and participation. As we all know, most of the epidemic starts at the community level, and we think having the community at the center of our operations might be very helpful to quickly detect the epidemics and also respond to the epidemics. So under this, under this thematic area, we main focus on strengthening the current communication systems that are existing and making the community members being responsible and responsive whenever we have such epidemics or emergencies. The third strategic direction is on multi-sectoral co collaboration. The conditions that, the service delivery two conditions that we are being discussing are basically being acted on by every sector and every member in the community. And so we propose that having a wider collaboration, efforts that are well coordinated, it will help us to quickly respond and combat the emergencies, uh, outbreaks that are upcoming. And we can take an example of NCDs, we know it's, only the health, it's not only the health sector that can respond to NCDs, other sectors are involved, there are workplaces, there are community issues, so a multi-sectoral approach is highly encouraged. The fourth strategic direction is on policy and legislation, and under this, 
we propose to strengthen the current policies and legislation to ensure that a multi-sectoral collaboration effort are well coordinated and we propose that this should be under the Prime Minister's office. Taking the example of the nutritional uh, partners, how they are doing, currently they have a multi-sectoral approach that is well coordinated under the Prime Minister's office. The fifth one is on human resource capacity, which is basically cross-cutting throughout the four thematic direction, of which we think health human resources should be well capacitated to be able to respond and to be prepared on the epidemics and responding to emergencies. For 2020 and 2021, we think we should focus on four strategic priorities. The first one, given the current threats and alarming situations, we propose that early warning preparedness response and monitoring should be the main focus for the next year, 2021. And under this, for emergency preparedness, uh, for emergency preparedness section, would really wish to see that the subnational level facilities are well prepared and have opened emergency operation centers that can quickly respond in case of emergencies or outbreaks. Community engagement and participation, we cannot run away from it. The community need to be well informed and aware so that they can be able to respond quickly whenever there are emergencies or outbreaks. Intersectoral collaboration, given the nature of the conditions that involved a number of sectors, this should be taken forward and start immediately to be able to curb the situations. Human resource capacity is cross-cutting and is ongoing. On conclusion, we think due to the nature of these conditions, emerging epidemics like uh, Ebola, Zika, and the others, and NCD, they are being handled differently, and their responses are differently. So we propose these two to be separated and discussed differently so that justice can be done to both sections. Uh, also, the cross-cutting themes like gender, we'd wish to see it coming more prominent in the discussions so that it is not forgotten throughout. Another area that is under concluding remarks is on the emphasis on health impact assessment on development initiatives at multinational level. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for your clear presentation. And uh, before I ask some input from all of you, I want to repeat an announcement or to make a new. Uh, someone, I think, uh, left some jewelry, some gold chains somewhere there to approach me. They are in an envelope with Hyatt. So gold chain is with me here. And then someone left his watch, and it is heard from group two, a uh, group six, which are is a new new directions, new challenges, yeah. service de delivery, new challenges, and uh, they are open for your input. Same group or other members. You discuss also issues of the community. Yes. Yeah. And for issues of community, I would suggest we start with the community. Other hands? Yes, I've seen you. Any other hands? Was there a part? Okay. Mti wa upendo, tutembe ipamoja. Na wasalimi ya ndugu zangu, watumishi wa mungu popote mulipo. Poleni na kazi ya mungu. Mimi naitua Wilson K. Chota Muganga. Ambaye ndiyo. Sante.
Wale na kazi watumishi wa Mungu. Kazi tunayoifanya kwa ajili ya taifa ni Mungu mwenyewe inambariki. Hivyo nami nawatia moyo kwamba tuendelee na ndivyo nilivyofanya mwenzenu hatimaye kwamba kwa sababu Mungu ameniweka duniani na kunipa kazi ya kuhudumia watu basi na mimi naendelea hivyo. Mimi naitwa Wilson K. Chota Mganga. Ni mganga mstafu mkoa wa Mbeya wilaya ya Mbarali. Nilistafu tarehe nane mwezi wa 12 2017. Hivi sasa niko kwetu huko kijijini. Lakini pindi taarifa zinapokuja kutoka kwenye ofisi ya wizara kwamba wajumbe wanakuja huko na mimi naondoka kule hatimaye nakuja pale na mwaga material ambaye Mungu amenipa. Lakini nabarikiwa sana nimepata taarifa kwamba baadhi ya mikoa tayari wanasema bwana tumeshalianzisha dudu. Ninafurahi kweli. Ndugu zangu. Habari za vifo vya watoto wachanga mama wazazi wajawazito haipendezi kweli kweli lakini niende haraka haraka kwamba ndugu zangu makomando yani wananchi wanaojichagua wenyewe kuifanya kazi kule kwenye kitongoji jamani ile ni nguvu kazi kweli kweli ndio maana inaitwa uturo na mimi mpaka nimefika hapa ni kwa ajili ya kazi ya wale wananchi nadhani mnanielewa ndugu zangu chagueni makomando wakisha kame, yani wanachaguana wenyewe wakisha chaguana wenyewe hatimaye kazi inaanza wanakuwa na madaftari mawili narudia tu kwa wale wengine ambao hawajawahi kunisikiliza madaftari mawili kila kitongoji daftari la mama mjamzito na watoto chini ya miaka mitano hivyo basi mama mjamzito akipata mimba kule anaenda kuripoti kwa komando komando hatimaye anampa karatasi wanaenda kituo cha kutolea huduma. Hakuna mimba itakayopotea kwenye kitongoji wanailinda wenyewe. Kama kuna mama na kidokezo cha hatari wanamlinda kwa karibu. Lakini samahani. Msitangaze kazi kwamba tutawalipa pesa mtafeli. Mtafeli. Kitongoji ni kaya yeye yuko pale kuna shangazi yake, kuna kababu, kuna wifi. Kwa hiyo kwenye kitongoji pale ile ni kaya. Akina mama wale wanafanya kazi vizuri sana. Lakini kama mtakuwa na chochote cha kuwapa, wapeni kama kabonasi kwa kuwafurahisha na wao watajisikia kweli tuna wenzetu. Asante sana na shukuru kwa kunikaribisha. Thank you very much. So that was Mr. Chota Mganga who is the founder of the Uturo model if we could have patented it we could have been rich so he retired in 2017 and uh, recognizing that maternal mortality and neonatal mortality is unacceptable he started working with the community where he was working and uh, created groups of volunteer in the community which are called commandos who they work in each hamlet and uh, they create the registers of every pregnant woman and every under five and they follow them up make sure they go to the clinics and whatever and they manage to do wonders and he's so grateful that several regions have adopted the uturo model so he's uh, appealing to us that uh, don't promise to pay them but when they've worked hard you can give them a bonus thank you very much chota mganga any other comment yes yeah, I, i was in this group so there are some inputs that i want to to make one was uh, on ncd uh, it doesn't fit on a emerging conditions because it is not emerging condition anyway uh, possibly we are emerging on interve intervening uh, ncds because all the evidence that we we will be using on uh, HSSP 5 are similarly uh, similar evidence that we have used in HSS 4 because we are using uh, some of the finding from a step survey in 2012 uh, and we'll be using step survey uh, data in HSSP 5 so we'll be contradicting ourselves and eight years have passed and not contradicting ourselves again uh, 
when we were in our groups, some of the evidence which show that uh, we need to have special uh, focus on an NCD uh, as a MTR report said that uh, there were no any intervention on NCD, no training on NCD, which are also quite wrong. Possibly we could use inadequate or limited, limited rather than no uh, on, an, on our MTR report. So we ask our colleagues who prepared the MTR report just to make a twist on the, on the language. The word no is not very appropriate on that because we had strategic plan uh, on NCDs and uh, midterm evaluation on, uh, on the NCD strategic plan show that there are some progress made uh, out of that. Lastly, uh, NCD groups also is a generic. There's a lot of uh, condition within NCD and some are neglected as well. Neglected, there are neglected NCD and there are major uh, NCD. And the only problem with this neglected NCD is we are very much moved by mortality. Uh, most of us uh, pay attention when at death. And things like mental health causes a lot of disability. There's a high daily with the mental health. Uh, there's high daily with the sickle cells and other conditions, which the ultimate uh, end result is not death. So we have to twist our focus and look at the quality of life rather than by mortality. Any other input? Yes. Um, <coughs> Asante kwa kunipa nafasi. Nitaomba ni zungumze kidogo katika mwelekeo wa sera. Na nikiangalia toka tumeanza juzi jana na leo naona hesabu zimekimbiwa kabisa lakini ni nitoe angalizo katika maeneo makubwa mawili la kwanza kwamba serikali yetu tume tumezoea na tumekuwa hivyo tumezaliwa mpaka sasa tunaendelea kuona serikali kika vifaa na kuwezesha miundombinu na namna ambavyo huduma zinatolewa katika maeneo ya vituo lakini mpaka leo sijaona hesabu zinazotuambia kwamba ikiwa tunataka kukamilisha uwepo wa huduma za afya kwa kila mtanzania kwa kiwango ambacho kila mtanzania atakifikia ataweza kupata huduma hizo za afya tunatakiwa tuwekeze kiasi gani ili upungufu wa kiwango cha pesa na kiwango cha rasilimali zinazowekezwa sasa tuweze kuzionyesha kwa kuainisha ile gap ya kinacho ya tulicho nacho sasa na kwa uhalisia kinachotakiwa lakini tukiteki into consideration ya ongezeko la watu na tukiteki into consideration upanuzi wa vituo vipya na kuchukua pia umbali wa vituo hilo eneo la kwanza eneo la pili tunazungumzia bima upande huu mmoja serikali inasema tunakusanya mapato tunawekeza katika kumhakikishia mtanzania anapata huduma za afya upande huu wa pili tunasema tupate bima watu wa, wawe wanachama wa bima ili chombo hiki cha bima kimwezeshe mtanzania kupata huduma za afya lakini hiki chombo cha bima kilipie huduma hizi za afya kwenye vituo vinavyotoa huduma kwa mtazamo huo maana yake tuna mifumo ya double payment katika kupokea huduma wakati umefika wakuweza kuainisha kwamba kama ikiwa kila mtanzania anatakiwa awe na bima 
katika risk sharing itachakiwa kiasi gani ili kiwe kimetosheleza kwa uhalisia wa mahitaji na kwa uhalisia wa ukubwa wa nchi wa kiwango cha Watanzania walivyo idadi yao na factors nyinginezo hiyo premium itakuwa kiasi gani je hiyo premium serikali inaweza kuifikia je mtanzania wa kawaida anaweza kuifikia na kama ikiwa hatuwezi ni kwa kiwango kipi je tunaweza tukaendelea na barabara zote mbili kwa wakati mmoja barabara moja ya serikali kukusanya kodi na kuwezesha upatikanaji wa watumishi kuwekeza infrastructure kusomesha wataalamu na kudeploy kwenye vituo kwa kisha huduma zinatolewa upande mmoja lakini upande wa pili kwamba sasa kuna bima unatakiwa ulipe milioni moja laki tano sijui milioni mbili kwa kwa kaya ya watu sita au ulipe laki mbili kwa kila mtu au kwa mahesabu yote ambayo yatawezekana kuonekana pale lakini hizi ni njia mbili tofauti ambazo ni lazima tuchague tunataka ipi na kama ni mseto huu mseto wa njia hizi uwe wa namna gani ipi itawezitosheleza kuwa kiwango halisia cha mtanzania kufikia kulipa hiyo premium itakayokuwa imefaa katika njia ya mseto ili angalau tuweze kusema kwa uhakika tunapobadilisha sheria kusema bima ni lazima maana yake tumeteki into consideration wa Tanzania kipato chao wale ambao hawataweza kufikia kabisa kuweza kulipia hiyo serikali itakuwa na wajibu wa kufanya nini Niamie kwenye pointi ya pili Tunazungumzia watumishi watoshi na hii asilimia hamsini labda kwa miaka mingi sana imekuwa hivyo labda tukisema kwenye miaka ya mbili na na, na tano, mbili na, 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 na sita kitu kama hivyo tulikuwa uh, tuna upungufu wa karibu asilimia sitina saba kwa it is true kwamba tumepiga hatua na hatua hii tuliyopiga mpaka sasa tuko kwenye hiyo asilimia hamsini kama upungufu na inawezekana ikawa chini kidogo ya hamsini lakini mimi naweza kusema kwamba bado katika mahesabu ya kawaida tu bado tunapiga mark time. Lakini nina wasiwasi wa neno moja linaloitwa establishment. Establishment ya kijumla wakati wake umepita. Tuambizane ukweli. We need to be focused kwenye kila wilaya, kwenye kila mkoa kwa mujibu wa eneo, kwa mujibu wa idadi ya watu waliopo kwenye kile kituo na kwa mujibu wa wa wa, wa capacity ya hicho kituo na workload inayopatikana kwenye kituo ikapigwa hesabu ikapatikana establishment per center rather than establishment across ukaipiga tu district hospitals establishment yake na watumishi 650 na, na kila mtu anarifaa kwenye 650 unaenda mafia population ni watu watu 1500 wana hospitali moja ya wilaya na dispensary ziko karibu 16 lakini unaambiwa watumishi hawatoshi. Reference ni nini? Reference ni hiyo kwamba establishment inasema hospitali ya wilaya ni watumishi mia sita sijui na ngapi au mia saba. Mwisho wa siku kila sehemu unaambiwa kuna watumishi hawatoshi. Nimeingia kwenye wodi ambayo ina wagonjwa wawili, ina vitanda ishirini na nne na wauguzi walikuwa kwa pale watatu, nilipouliza wauguzi wanatosha au watoshi, jibu likawa hawatoshi. Kwa mimi nafikiria kwamba katika kurudi katika kusema kuhusu hesabu pointi zangu hizo mbili narudia tena kusema jamani ni hesabu ni muhimu katika kutuwezesha kufika mbali zaidi katika afya. Asante sana. The former minister has given three points and uh, two of those points have been raising so I'm so happy that I have a bigger voice in him. So one of them, the first one, he talked about the policy direction. So the government has been investing in health, training people, deploying uh, personnel, but also building infrastructure, providing medicine. But we always say 
things are not enough. So, why should we not have quantifiable gaps to know that what do we want to provide and what are the gaps and what are the costs so that we can be talking in real term. And when we are doing this, we look at issues of population growth, distances, geographical issues, as well as burden of disease when putting up health facilities. So that was one. The second one, he talked about health insurance, where he, he said that at the moment we have a dual carriage way. One, the government is providing uh, resources from personnel, infrastructure, medicines for the government to provide health care and the health facilities. On the other track, there is the health insurance. People are contributing, the government also as an employer is contributing, and the NHI, the health insurance is paying to the same health facility. So this is some type of double financing. And uh, we need to either to choose one, way, one route we are going, or if it's a mixed method, we should have a very clear who is funding what so that we can perhaps subsidize the insurance, uh, level of insurance premiums that are paid for those who cannot afford. The third point was on HRH, that the time of using a fixed establishment for determining human resource need is gone. Now we are saying we have 50% shortage. It is because we are looking at the establishment of each health facility. But if we look, as we have said about the workload indicators and service needs, you might find that the need is not as big as it is. So he's asking us to go that route so that we are. So the last two is uh, something also is close at my heart. So I'm it was very easy for me to translate and inject my own words. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other? Can we have the group respond? I will delegate to the chair. Chair, chair can you do? This is a delegation. Who's your chair? Dr. Mongezi. Dr. Sarah Mongezi. Thank you very much. I think uh, most of these questions are uh, geared towards uh, domestic financing, so I might as well ask uh, for the group uh, from the financing to help on that. But I agree very much with the Honorable Minister uh, in terms of uh, human resource and uh, how we categorize uh, how to distribute our human resource. But uh, because you have given me this chance, uh, moderator, honorable chair, let me just uh, give a, uh, an information that uh, we're going to launch an NCD program uh, on 14th of this month, but it will start with pre-launching activities. So on the 9th, we'll ha be having um, the normal second week uh, of which the Vice President, uh, Honorable Mama Samia Suluhu, directed some years ago that it should be directed towards physical activity. So it will start on the 9th. And then on the 11th and 12th, we are going to have an NCD symposium, uh, which is uh, being coordinated amongst our stakeholders, NIMRI, Ocean Road, Tan CDA, and uh, MUHAS. So please welcome. The call for abstract is already in the web. So if somebody hasn't received it, please just see me or see Dr. Obugui. And on the 14th, that's the launch, and we're expecting the Honorable Prime Minister to launch the NCD program. But uh, a matter of uh, attention is we're going to have a whole week of uh, NCD screening services at Jamhuri grounds. So this is the time we can showcase what we are doing. We haven't called our symposium, a scientific conference, is just a symposium. So bring all your interventions, bring all your experiences, bring your advices. So uh, we are also going to showcase uh, different types of NCDs. So if you want to participate in that, please welcome. I'm here with uh, Dr. Obuguyu. We'll have your names and then we'll collaborate or uh, communicate with you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. 
and the um, Thank facilitator. You. Thank you. Uh, doc, uh, Chair of the Health Financing, Lusadio, are you around? Can someone from Health Financing respond or the DPP uh, you are going to help? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm the co-chair of the fi health financing group. I think uh, all the points that I was raised by by our honourable ex-minister are very pertinent uh, issues that really we are taking them and we will consider them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So we go to the last but uh, not least and not last, community systems. Community systems? Oh, yeah. You don't look like the community. Right? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Nelson Mswea. I'm with uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, but I'm well known as LFA, uh, which stands for the local funding agent for, for the Global Fund in Tanzania. Um, I've been requested by the group to do a presentation around what we deliberated on the uh, community system. Um, I think before I start is to thank the group. I think the deliberation were quite robust uh, and really. Um, now, in terms of our motto, as you can see there, I think it's like a coincidence with the group number one. Um, so what we have selected here is trying to make sure that no one is left behind. And if you translate that in Swahili, it's called Tembe Pamoja. So that is the motto which we have selected as a, as a group. Now, if you go to the uh, first um, requirement in terms of the vision. So as a group, actually, we came with only one vision. Only one vision. We want to see an improved health outcome through a community system which is gender responsive, participatory, equitable, focus on youth, responsive and preventive, coordinative and promotive. So basically, that is the vision for this group on community system. So only one vision. Now, in terms of what we want to achieve in the next five years under this thematic area, so we do have a number of strategic direction which we think we need to actually embrace uh, for the next uh, five years. The first one, which is very important, is really to ensure health population through health promotion and accountability. We are seeing very little health promotion on the community. So we want this to be really one of the strategic focus for the next five years. Moreover, if you look on the second strategic point, health promotion activity in the community must be maximized. So it's not a question of only talking about the promotion. They need to receive the right attention. And we are giving things like simple examples. How many of us do we exercise? Eh? I can be the first one to say I normally do it every morning, but how about you? <laughs> so, this is very important, okay? And then the second issue is... <laughs> so, 
the mere fact you are laughing and you are enjoying, it means that this does not happen to you and maybe even to the communities. <laughs> and the other point also we want to cover is around nutrition. So very important aspects. Thirdly, in terms of the strategic direction, is really to make sure that response to all health matter is available. Okay? And here you're talking about curative, prevention, and when there are disease outbreak. Okay? We are very good in focusing on treatment, but we are saying also put attention on prevention. Fourthly, in terms of the strategic direction for the next five years, as a group, we say we need to have a community which adapts to the current and the future health needs. I think the previous presentation has covered a lot of emergence uh, aspects. I don't want to mention them, but really what we are saying here, can we have a community which can adapt to those kind of emerging needs? The community which are living on the border, Okay, there are so many things which are happening there. Are they ready to actually respond to the emerging needs in those kind of society? Fifth, in terms of the strategic direction, we said the linkages between community and the health facility. We are talking about the referral system here. Must be enhanced. There is one thing about having community workers going to identify cases going to help the community, but do we have good linkages back to the facilities? So this is one area which we are saying, absolutely, we want to see the linkages addressed. Meaning that when we refer someone, there must be a competent HRH to take care of that condition at the health facility and vice versa. So that is one area which we also covered. Now, the other area of strategic direction which we thought is very important is in terms of gender empowerment on healthcare seeking behavior in the community. Very specific here, we are not referring to women and kids, we are talking about gender. So it cut across, okay? So also the issue of health tend to affect men in the community. So we want to have a situation whereby even men are encouraged, okay, to have healthcare seeking behaviors because that can help the entire community and it can help also the other vulnerable uh, individuals in the community. And then the other strategic direction for the next five years, which we think is very important, let's leverage on the existing community structure. Let's utilize them to empower the, the community, okay? We understand that the Ministry of Health has now completed the community-based health program and is on the final stage of dissemination. So here, what we are insisting as a group, this program needs to be rolled out immediately and it has to be operationalized. So the whole issue of CHW, how are you going to identify them? How are you going to work with them? How are you going to remunerate them or incentivize them? All those components are part of this community-based health program. So now is the point for us to make sure this program is rolled out and disseminated so that we can start to implement the program's SAP. The other area which we think is a strategic direction for the community system is around universal health coverage. And here you can look on the three components in terms of financing, you can look in terms of coverage, you can look in terms of the service uh, and all that. So again, uh, it's, it's one of the areas which we thought we need to pay a lot of attention. And then the issue of financing, I think it was covered in the previous group, innovative participation strategy for better health financing. So here we want to make sure the out-of-pocket costs which are hitting our community really is something of the past after five years, okay? So this is one thing which we are saying, hang on here. We have been talking a lot about this issue, but now it has to be a priority, uh, and let's measure it after a specific time. There was a gentleman in the morning who was very disappointed that we never spoke about the traditional health service. Luckily, this group picked it, and
and we are saying we want to recognize alternative medicine but it has to be regulated I need to be comfortable in my village to go and get the service from my traditional healer I must have option I can go to a health facility or I can go to a traditional healer as long as really they've gone through a proper vetting process so what we are saying we want also this to be a strategic focus uh, in the next five years because we know these are the people who are helping us in the community. If you look on the TB, case detection, these are the people who are helping actually to pick up some of the missing cases. So let's embrace them, let's recognize them, and let's move forward. MNE framework. MNE framework for the community system must be strengthened. So what we are talking here is not the cut and paste MNE framework from the ministry going down. What we are saying here, community need to develop their own framework. What sort of indicators do they want to monitor to check the effectiveness of the community-based intervention and also the services which are done at the facility level? So have an ME framework which address specific needs of the community to help them in their decision making. So this is one area which we want really to be uh, put a lot of attention on MNE framework uh, for the community system. Operational research. Operational research is very important. We know at the community level, there are a lot of community intervention which are done. Also, within the community, we do have health facilities which provide clinical services. How can we assess what is going on well and what needs to be strengthened? So we need to have a system whereby even operational research can be promoted at that level so that it can give us informed information to make a decision. Nutritional program. We have heard about the issue of malnutrition in a number of regions. I think there's a lot of information in Katavio Rukwa last week. So we are saying we want the area of nutrition to receive the right focus. So nutritional program addressing stunting and overnutrition through community awareness and health promotion ought to be strengthened. So I think that is paramount because if you want to have a health community, a health uh, population, you need to make sure that from the lower ages, people are actually um, given nutritional uh, products. So very important. Lastly, which is really the idea of our discussion, this was really very important to us. The vulnerable and marginalized groups, orphans, elderly, disabled, how do we engage them? We need to make sure that there is equitable and inclusive participation of them in the community program. Some of the facilities even which we construct, they are not even user friendly for these groups. So what we are saying here, how can we ensure that these groups are embedded uh, in, the, in the community program? So absolutely, very important for the next five years. So these are like clear strategic direction we as a group, we thought we need to cover or we need to be addressed for the next five years. Now, for the next one year, and you can see we had a lot of ideas as a group we had to use a voting system to get to the strategic priority for the next one year. Because everything is important. But we said, okay, what are the priorities? So these are the four priorities which we think uh, we can focus for the next one year. Linkages, very important, between community and health facilities. Community-based programs, uh, which the Minister of Health has promised that is already approved, so we want this to be rolled out and operationalize, everybody is waiting for this. Everyone is waiting for that. So let's, let's uh, roll it out. The issue of the uh, health financing, very important to manage the issue of the out of pocket. And also we need to monitor what is happening. It's good to talk about the community intervention, but we need to have a robust system of monitoring it and evaluating for uh, future um, corrections if need be, improvements. So those are like four strategic priorities which we think let's focus it on year one and then some of them can continue as we progress uh, near two, year three. So the advice uh, 
back to the, to the team. Uh, as you can see, we had a lot of ideas. I think what we are saying here, these priorities need to be refined further, okay, uh, around what we have proposed as, as, as a group. We need to have a clear roadmap and milestone. We want to see year one, year two, year three, year four. When we come here as a group, we can say this is what we agreed, this is what has been done, and this is the way forward. So we want a clear milestone to be set by the team. And of course, we are also proposing uh, a review of what has been done on uh, HSP4 and the policy priority and see what could not be realized and what can be taken forward. And I think the, the, last, the last two points around the review of the social welfare and nutritional components, I think we never spent a lot of time on this area, but I think we, we thought um, is one of the area uh, which we need to really take it forward as we continue the formulation process. So with that, uh, I think I'm done, and uh, I welcome any comments or discussion point. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your presentation. I, you have represented the community well. I withdraw my comment. <laughs> and I liked your last bullet. It is talking about include review, social welfare, and nutrition component. We are going to do that right now. So can the social welfare come and uh, say a few words? When this strategic plan was prepared, the Minister of Health was Minister of Health and Social Welfare. So strategic plan four was for health and social welfare. Okay. But uh, you have seen we have focused more on health while we have social welfare. And uh, I'm a community person where social welfare is needed. Please, Madam. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to uh, say something on social welfare services. So, um, the yesterday discussion, um, there, were, there, there was no any area where social welfare services was, where, was discussed. So, we came out with the policy recommendations that will help to discuss issues related to social welfare. So we have the first point of policy recommendation, that is social welfare will be further decentralized and become a more fledged, uh, more full-fledged department in LOGAs to effectively reach community and the vulnerable groups. Uh, as we can see that social welfare services are working in, with different uh, laws and regulations, including uh, child Children, children's law, law of Children Act of 2009, Marriage Act, Trafficking Act, and the other laws and regulations. So we think that social welfare officers, they can work on that area and make uh, and involve different sectors which need also to have the department, the, the full-fledged department. And social work also work with the institutions, including daycare centers, where we all take our kids, and the, we, 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 the social worker makes uh, follow-up and is supervising the daycare centers, children's homes, um, approved schools, elder homes, so all these are the areas where social welfare services can work for. So um, also, we are dealing with the uh, welfare services for people with disabilities, um, people, uh, children, child protection, and the, um, we are doing case management. These are the special specialized services that are provided by the social workers, where the social workers identify the 
problems that the person have or child have and assess the child or the person with the problem and then refer the, pers the person or link the person with the services that needed by that, the, the person to solve the problem that they have. And we also <coughs> have um, the, the, the strengthening social welfare system and the structure for provision of equitable quality social welfare services to individual family groups, community, and the vulnerable groups, including children, people with disability, elderly, and destitution families. As we can see that we are providing services to these groups. So we need to have uh, structures that, uh, that the, the system that can uh, provide services to these groups. The system uh, that including um, including the the, the the system which include the as we can say that the, the social welfare is a system already so it works with the different system which It works into to the 60 blocks, which is the governance and the finance, the, the, the governance and leadership. We have governance, uh, three governance committees that are the people with, uh, with disability committee, elder um, councils, and the uh, women and child protection committees. So we need to have a good governance and leadership on that uh, committees in all levels, from the community level to uh, district level and the, region, the regional levels. And also we, 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 we have the so social services, as I say, that we need to provide services equitable, the, the people with vulnerable, the vulnerable groups and the marginalized need to have equitable access, accept, uh, ac equitable access of the services. And then we have the strengthening social welfare workforce through recruitment of social welfare officers, capacity building of social welfare officers, regulation of social work professional and monitoring of institution offering social work cause. We, 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 we are few, we are not uh, enough in all levels. So we need to recruit social welfares to work from the household level to the regional levels or to, in all levels. So we need to recruit social welfare officers in all kinds. We, 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 we need to build the capacity to social welfare so as they can provide uh, services from the community level, household level to the regional level, up to the regional level, and we also <coughs> need to have um, infrastructure for provision of social welfare services in our working places. So we need to have a privacy because you are working with the issues that are confidential, so we need to have the separate rooms for the um, social well workers to work on that. Uh, and then we need to have the social work professional uh, uh, councils that will help also to monitor social welfare provision at all levels. And we need also to, uh, to monitor all institutions that providing social uh, services. The daycare centers, the, home, uh, the ch children's home need, to, need close follow-up or close supervision so as they can provide all services in a good way. So um, in conclusion, oh, sorry. So as we're struggling for several years to, um, to
to position social welfare in, in, in social welfare services in health sector system. So we health sec, uh, context of healthy sector, the HCCP, HSSP for, for redefining inputs of social welfare in addressing healthy system. The challenges is critical. So the role of social wealth, social workers is to make sure that the vulnerable population are achieved uh, in accessibility, affordable, acceptability, availability of services as an objectives to be included into the strategies. Thank you so much for this. Thank you very much. I yeah, think you have been heard. So before I open the floor for discussion, the chair, the chair wants to respond to a few issues. Uh, thank you, moderator, uh, and the dear participants. Uh, I was waiting for Mr. Rusadio to respond on some issues which have been raised by our former minister, but I think he is not around for the time being. And uh, because of the, uh, the strength of the points which have been raised, I think the chair can take the opportunity at least to respond uh, on some points. Uh, maybe before I, I explain a few issues regarding to the uh, issues which you have raised, uh, Dr. Seth Rush, our former minister, let me appreciate that you have raised a very varied and important issues. But I would also like to give you a, a comfort that what you have, you have raised, already it has been in our thought. Uh, for example, the issue of uh, quantifiable gaps uh, for service delivery and uh, the corresponding costs of those gaps. Uh, briefly to say is that uh, my department of policy and planning, we have started working on that. We are preparing a study, a kind of study, which will do like resource mapping. Through that study, we want to establish the really, uh, I mean, the actual requirements as you have, have been raising, and vis-a-vis -vis the actual available resources. But not only that, we would also to, to look into allocative efficiency. For a number of years, we have been investing in some areas. Uh, for, for example, the maternal care. I think it is one of the areas which we have pumped a lot of resources. But yet, sometimes it is seemed we, we were going towards the success, but abruptly, the story turns into a different direction. So, we want to do such kind of analysis and studies to satisfy ourselves whether we are investing in a right way and in a right area, and in the right, we also in the right quantity. Further to that, we would also want to, through the same study, we would also want to explore other means of sources, and that is the physical space issues. So I think as 
stakeholders to the health sector. I'm sure once the study is ready, we will share the results. That's one. And the, I think you raised uh, another issue of uh, having two streams of funding. That is, the government still continue funding the health facilities through subventions, that is the OC, PE, and the development uh, funding. But again, on the other hand, there is the funding through NHIF and the other insurance schemes. Uh, sincerely, there are some key uh, obligations of the government, which in whatever way, it can't stop providing. For example, uh, the issue of uh, paying salaries to the health workers is the obligation of the government. The issue of uh, investing, that is the development issue, so that at the end of the day, the health services could be produced. It is also a prime uh, function of the government. Now, the issue of uh, other, uh, others, uh, I mean, uh, OC, the operational cost. In eventually, with the time, it is possible for his facilities to grow and generate the operational, and I mean, the, and, the, and they provide the operational cost. But for the time being, it, it is true, it may be seen that there is the, uh, like two uh, funding streams, but th that is a start. We, can, we cannot avoid that. Because in the meantime, when the national health insurance and the other insurance schemes are still at the infancy stage, definitely there won't be adequate funds to make the facilities run their functions. But eventually, once the insurance issue has come to our thinking that once we will have the, the full universal health insurance across the country, we are sure that the pooling will be big such that it may generate money which will be uh, uh, adequate once reimbursed to the health facilities and it will be adequate to run the, 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 the operational costs of the health facilities. So, it is just a stage. The other issue, um, you raised about the, the need of uh, allocating health staff based on the workload and avoid the traditional methods which we have been using I think it's also correct, very valid, and that's why uh, I think you, you, you are all aware that the government uh, have established the, the software called WISIN, Workload Indicator for Staffing Needs. We have done, for, we have done this in some areas, but our intention is to roll out the, this practice. It, is, it has been established that uh, the staffing level which we are used to, uh, to implement is not a reality. You may, let's say, in Kasi or somewhere, Rukwa. Status-wise, these are all regional referral hospitals. 
but the population they are saving is another thing. So that point is what makes us to shift from the traditional way of using the staffing, staffing level that uh, it made a, a kind of standard that at, at, at every regional referral hospital you have to have uh, this number of doctors, this number of nurses and uh, so forth. So that is not a reality. So we thank you and we agree on this as you have raised and we are on the way to implement that. Thank you, I just wanted to make some kind of update. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And I saw Dr. Ntuli was happy to hear social welfare up there because his directorate has, is a health, nutrition, and social. Yeah, that's a very important sector, actually. And it is within the department at the Pure Arch where we have the health, social welfare, and nutrition services. So having it into our health sector strategic plan five, is quite very relevant. But also to add on what uh, Mr. Mbanga said, with our direct health facility financing, one of the challenges has been uh, the resource allocation of formula and also uh, resource expenditure formula. So we have different stakeholders who actually support us in different ways. But when it comes to now sending money to the healthcare facilities, especially primary healthcare facilities, you find that, that uh, different stakeholders, they have been able to provide their own formula. So in the meantime, and I'd like maybe the team also to take into consideration on how best we, the health sector strategic plan five will address that challenge. But apart from that, there are some of the partners as well who do not uh, actually channel their funds through the direct health facility a mechanism. So we'd like also uh, the partners to abide to uh, the government uh, actually arrangement in ensuring that all the monies are sent through the direct health facility finance arrangement. So those were two things which I thought I should also add on what uh, Mr. Mbanga has been able to contribute on. Thank you. Thank you. I've not forgotten that we have not contributed to the last two presentations. Any, any burning hand? One? Ah, okay. Great. I start with the here. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Social welfare is an important uh, department. I have a few questions to ask her also. Uh, one is on the, I say, this, I've not heard of the strategies that would be put to to propose or ensure some kind of reintegration of those who were affected, like the juvenile or somebody, something went wrong, and the community did not accept him, and they went, they took him to a, to a home, a separate home. So what kind of strategies would be employed to e reintegrate that kind of person as part of a family member? Uh, Look at the juvenile home uh, in Dar es Salaam. And there are others as well. And two, um, this is a, it's, it's, I, I don't know what, it's a fallacy or what, but our culture is to have, uh, to care for the other members of the family. Now, are we diverging or what, do we put strategies to strengthen our traditions that is we have uh, uh, homes or we have siblings uh, tied together in the family as uh, 
family members, but then we, we take them to the remand homes, we take them to the juvenile homes. The elderly are suffering because the children do not accept their parents and parents complain that they are not part of the family members. And three, social welfare. Wale omba omba tunawafanyaje? Mana wanazidi kuongezeka mtani. Asante. Asante kwenye kiti. Na nawashukuru na group hii walivyo present lakini kuna kitu kimetajwa nataka kidogo nitoe tahadhari. Samwea imetajwa kamati zingine. Kamati. Inaitajwa kwamba oh labda tuwe na kamati hii na kamati. Na, na wasiwasi na utitiri wa hizi kamati ambazo tunazoanzisha. Na na, na usemi wa kwamba just as we have high infant very neto and maternal mortality. We also have a very high mortality of these committees. Zinakutana mara moja, mara mbili, zina disappear. Una form another name, zinakutana mara moja, mara mbili, zina disappear. I'm calling for integration. Kwa sababu kama issue iko related to health, whether it is ustawi wa jamii, iwe commodities, iwe huduma za wazazi, iwe watoto, iwe kamati moja. Kwa sababu wale mnawaita kwa wajumbe ni wale wale. Kwa sioni sababu ya kuendelea kuwa na wana kamati nyingi za ntuja adhari kwa sababu nyingi hati survival na vedi kwa survival asante mwenye kitu mina shukuru kwa mba umeleza yale ya liyo ulizo na waziri mstaf lakini na jambu moja hivi maiki zinafanya kazi zi Inafanya kazi, ngoja nita isogeza zaidi. Nimechukua maiki ya moderator, mana moderator ndio referi, kwa hiyo nime mdisloji kidogo from kuni manage. Mwenye kiti nasema nimeshukuru kwa mba umeleza hawa yale aliyokuwa ameuliza uh, waziri mstaafu kwa sababu maswali yale yanaleta undani wa nini tufikirie tunakokwenda kwenye strategy 5 ni maswali ya msingi sana madaktari wenzangu na healthcare providers wenzangu mtanisamee lakini naomba kusema jambo moja kuna element pale ya multi sectoral collaboration sasa hii mara nyingi sisi healthcare providers tunaisahau na tunadhani kwamba we know all ukweli ni kwamba we may not know all we need the other sectors to help me and i will give you one example i stayed here in a, in a, uh, dodoma for six years and when i started the first three years every year i was having circles of malaria measles meningococcal meningitis cholera basi mwaka mzima nakwenda kwenye circle hiyo lakini nilipo wa involve watu wa huyu wa mwisho huyu aliyeongea walinisaidia sana katika ku control hizi circle mpaka askofu mmoja akaja kuniuliza ha, mi niliambiwa watu wa hapa wajifunzi lakini kweli ni kwamba we had success because of the collaboration with other sectors actually they were more efficient in talking to the communities kuliko tulivyokuwa sisi 
sisi tuna shortcuts zile mtu mmoja alikuwa anaisema lakini wale wenzetu they interact very well with the communities and now that we are talking of uh, community involvement let's open up so that we involve the other people who can really interact uh, with the communities let's empower them so that they have the message we want passed over what we want the communities to do they are better in informing they are better in getting to the communities in areas in some areas than we are thank you mwenyeki Asante mwenyekiti nina penda ni recognize kwamba makundi yote yamefanya kazi nzuri katika kuset strategic directions na policy priorities kwa next strategic plan ya sekta ya afya mimi naangalizo moja tu lakini pia mtanisaidia siji set up ya sasa hivi nikiamini kwamba instrument atakayo kuwa mpewa waziri wa, wa wizara hii inagusa pamoja na community development lakini all over component hii mwenyekiti atujezungumzia na pengine ningekuwa waziri ningeuliza katika hili message ya priority zipi kwa kama nimesahulika mwenyekiti moderator nadhani wizara iliangalie ili waziri asije kakataa kazi hii ambayo imefanyika kubwa asante uh, mimi na shukuru group ambayo ilizungumzia community uh, because they put uh, traditional healers kama part ya community intervention lakini nimekuwa sad katika zile four strategic area wameiondoa nafikiri reality tests tunaweza kuifanya kama tunamkumbuka babu waliliondo nchi 80% ya wagonjwa wetu their face contact of uh, services katika form ya afya ni kwenye traditional alternative medicine alafu hospitali ni second contact sisi tuliwahi kufanya study tanga katika kuona role of traditional healers kwenye kusaidia referral of mental health patients na kwenye qualitative analysis ya study yetu ilionyesha kwamba mara nyingi sio mimi ninayugua ambaye naweza nikamake decision at this particular time nataka kwenda wapi lakini the most influential uh, family member ambaye labda ndio mwenye resources especially anaelipia fedha za huduma wengi huwa wanataka mgonjwa kwanza anzie kwa traditional healer na ata spend months or years for traditional healers kama traditional healer hajao equipped so what we did uh, to the equipped traditional healers uh, we trained them to do uh, quick analysis and refer patient to the hospital but in zuri hata wagonjwa ambao walipata contact mara moja na traditional healers quickly wakawa referred to the hospital uh, my take hapa ni kwamba katika lile group kwenye their strategic priority number two, walipoweka community wata strengthen community sisi kwa mwaka 2021 then wakaweka community including traditional healers so that traditional healers can be equipped na wakatusaidia otherwise system ita fail kwa sababu haipati wagonjwa on time kwa kuongezea tunaongezea kwa traditional healers pamoja na, wa, na wachungaji wa leo tunaona matangazo yao njooni kwetu tutawaombea mtapona kwa hiyo pamoja na wachungaji na waganga wa kienyeji wote wahusishwe kwenye swala hili asante Asante sana na shukuru. 
Mimi kwangu si swali. I just want to to highlight a bit about the Uturo model because it has been discussed a bit in a different uh, presentations. One point that I want to highlight on that uh, approach, we should understand, we must understand that the Uturo model, it was just one area of health and it is on maternal and child health. And the the approach we are, which we are planning now, which is a modified Uturo model, it is looking into integrated services, uh, which is malaria, HIV, TB, nutrition, and other areas of health. So whatever the suggestions and the uh, decision we are making, although the guideline is already, we should also take into consideration that this person, the community health worker, will be doing more than maternal and child health. Kwa hiyo unaweza ukaona mzigo atakaye kuwa, atakao kuwa anafanya, ndio matu nasema this is a modified the Uturo was just on maternal and child health. So the community health workers or commandos were able to do their work and then set uh, some few hours to do intervention on maternal and child health. But if they will be working in, a to in a integrated uh, other health areas, they, they need to dedicate number of days ambazo tume propose kwenye guideline. Kwa hiyo wakati tunaangalia hiyo modo, tuone kwamba this is a person who will be doing more than maternal and child health. Asante nisani. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to remind one thing about the occupational health and safety as we all know that our country is entering the industrial revolution or the industrial era and we are opening up more and new industries with new technologies and some with hazardous materials and therefore the health sector should be ready uh, to take care of people who have got affected due to chemicals, machines and whatever. So I think it is high time the health sector strategy five to make sure that it accommodates issues of Special health and safety as a lesson learned to the developed world in 1970s during industrial revolution. Moreover, we as the health sector, we should take care of ourselves. The health sector strategic plan five should reflect its workforce, the issues of vaccination, hepatitis B, and the like. It should be clearly stipulated. And also, we should uh, take care of the general population. Nowadays, the hepatitis B issue has become a, an issue, and we should take care, no, inform the, the a public of how they will be uh, immunized against these diseases. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The, the table of elders decided to use Kiswahili, so very briefly, they, said, they talked about uh, a caution, a caution about forming many committees. Many committees are formed then with very much enthusiasm. Then they meet once, twice, then they die. So it's better to have fewer than continue forming committees. So the other was uh, uh, Dr. Punda stressed about multi-sectoral collaboration and uh, health sector people not to feel that you know all because he gave an example on how they managed to control cholera and the other magonjo uh, mlipuko by involving other people, especially the social welfare people. We also had a cautionary tale from the former, former everything, from DMO to RIMO to director, PS, chief medical officer, Dr. Mbando, 
about the instrument. We have not talked of community development because I think uh, the chair will answer, but uh, in uh, the, this big ministry with a long name has two components, the health one under uh, Dr. Chaula, and we have another PS who is responsible for community development. So we So, so there are two PSs who are focusing on different areas, but what you cautioned was very important. How do the two work together? Because at the end, when you are talking of elderly women and children, we are also talking to them about here. I think there are many activities were happening. They were expected also to be presented. I'm sure some are in the floor here. Then. Yeah, there was a response there that, that they appreciated now traditional medicine is involved in this group. So because many people start there and also there was an interjection that also there are faith healers who are now becoming more prominent. So those were the contributions in Swahili. So I thank you all for the contributions, for discussions today, but also in the past three days. The Secretariat, consultants, and ourselves, we have looked at what you have presented, and uh, we have some summary of the proposed priorities. Before I present those, where you start is where you end. So anyone who started this meeting in the high table should go back there. Anyone who started this meeting start sitting up there should go back, including the WHO representative. Where is the Danida, the Ellen, private sector? Yeah. Let's once again uh, try to explain on the issue which have been raised by my former boss, Dr. Bando. Uh, I'm learning that once you have this big brain in, in the meeting, you have to get prepared because they always raise the difficult issues, though very important issues. Uh, briefly, what I can say is that uh, maybe we, we, we haven't touched adequately or in any, uh, any way the issue of the community development in our uh, mid-term review and even in our discussions and this is because the the document which brought these findings is the HSSP 5, 4 the HSSP 4 when it was being formulated the ministry or the sector was I, I would say we had the minister called Minister of Health and the Social Welfare. And the, by then, there was no, I mean, there was no a component of community development. So that's why the findings and even the discussions was about health and the social welfare, that is social determinants for health. But currently, because we have a new structure which uh, comprising the community development part, uh, I think it is quite relevant to start thinking on that issue 
as we are moving to the preparation of the HSSP 5. And to my thinking, I would say, because the community development people are the ones which are very key to mobilize the community. And actually, they are expert on that. We can add another thing. I don't know, uh, because when I joined the, the Minister of Health, I, 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 I met the, the term called the social determinant of wealth, and actually they are actually numbered. You talk about agriculture, education. Kongezea para lipo Malizia Mr. Mbanga ya swali ya lilo uliza Dr. Mbando ila msingi sana. Sasa upanda wa wizara afya maendelea jamii jinsia wazena na watoto kama tunafamu instrument hile hiko kwa waziri lakini hapa chini tuna idara kuu mbili sasa ukija upande wa watamisemi sasa ambao sisi ndio watekelezaji wa shughuli hizo kuna idara afya ustawe jamii na lishe lakini ndani ya ustawe jamii pia tuna maendeleo ya jamii kwa hiyo na ukiangalia kwenye structures ukishuka chini zaidi kwa maana alimashauri kushuka chini tuna extension workers ambao wapo ukiacha wale maafisa afya wasaidizi tuna maafisa ustawi maafisa ugani pamoja na baadhi ambao ni maafisa maendeleo ya jamii kwa upande wa misebi sasa kazi na wao ni kwamba kwenye swala zima la uhamasishaji wa maswala mbalimbali ikiwemo CHF leo boreshwa ndio hawa watu ambao ni very instrumental kujikuhakisha kwamba watu wanakuwa enrolled kwenye maeneo mbalimbali kwa hiyo nadhani ni jambo la msingi sana kuangalia namna gani kwenye mpango mkakati wa tano ambao tutaweza kuweka sehemu kabisa ambayo itaelezea namna ambavyo sekta kwa maana afya ambavyo inaweza kufanya kazi na sekta nyingine kwa maana ya ustawi wa jamii maendeleo ya jamii pamoja na lishe kama ambavyo eh, nimeweza kuielezea pale awali kwa hiyo hili naliona ni, ni swala la msingi kwa maana hiyo na ni la msingi kwa sababu gani nyingine ni kwa sababu nyingi hizi sekta ambazo zipo ndani ya wizara ya afya pamoja na ofisi ya rais amesemi ndio zinazo define social determinants za afya kwa hiyo mimi nilikuwa naona ni kitu ambacho kimekuwa raised muda mwafaka na tunahitaji tukipokea na kuweza kuangalia tunavyowekaje lakini ukiachia hivyo kuna kitu Dr. Ama aliweza kukielezea pale. Uh, sasa sisi tulikuwa natafuta namna gani ambavyo tutakuwa na waratibu vizuri wale wa hudumu wa afya ngazi ya jamii, yani community health workers. Tukaona our extension workers ndio wao wana uwezo wa kuwasimamia kwa karibu pale na ndio tutaweza kupata ripoti kutoka katika maeneo yale. Kwa sababu tulichokuja kulenda baada ya kufanya tathmini wengi wao ambao wapo kwenye ngazi za kata majukumu mengi huwa wanajifanyia na mengi wa wasimamii kutoka katika ngazi za mashauri kwa tukiona tukiwa na extension workers ambao pamoja na majukumu mengine wanayofanya wakawasimamia na community health workers itasaidia sana kuongeza uwajibikaji wa wale community health workers ili kutokuja na kitu ambacho kitakuwa ni tofauti na structures zizopo kama ambavyo ilikuwa inapendekezwa labda afisa tarafa ndio aweze kusimamia tukiona afisa tarafa yuko mbali sana ni lazima tuwe na mtu ambaye yuko jirani kabisa na community health workers ili tuweze kupata report kupitia wao na hawa pia watatusaidia kwa maana ya CBOs na CSOs zinazofanya kazi kule kama zinafanya kulingana na ambavyo wameweza kufanya registration zao kwa hiyo hili ni kundi ambalo tunaliona ni muhimu sana katika kusaidia kufanya transformation ya sekta afya nchini. 
sasa kwenye sehemu ya pili ilikuwa ni ile kitu alichoweza kupresent msuya na namshukuru daktari ameweza kukiongelea committee committee kwenye community kwenye kuna changamoto wa committees najua wakati mnafanya kazi katika kipindi chenu tulikuwa na village health committee kwenye ward kulikuwa na committee sasa hizi kuna community health worker au kuna health facility governing committee lakini vitu haviongei sasa mmoja kitu ambacho strategy inatakiwa itusaidie pia ni namna gani ambavyo tutabakia na na committee chache kwenye ngazi ya jamii ambazo zitakuwa zita zikiongea na committee nyingine zilizopo kwenye ngazi ya mashauri kwa mfano health facility governing committee haiongei na council health service board sasa kama ziongee hizi hapa sasa uwajibikaji na kweli kwa hiyo tunaweza tukawa na health facility governing committee ambayo pia ukiachia ku report kwenye kituo ina report na kwenye village general council kwenye serikali ya kijiji kwa hiyo serikali ya kijiji maana yake mwenyekiti wa kijiji na mtendaji wa kijiji atasaidia kuwasimamia hawa waweze kutuletea taarifa vizuri kwa hiyo wa kufanya hivyo committee nyingine sasa hizi ukienda kwenye kata au kijiji chochote ukiulizia naomba kuonana na kamati ya afya ya kijiji watu wanajitokeza lakini ukiwaomba naomba muutasari wa kikao chenu kilichopita hutakaa upate sasa vitu kama hivyo inabidi uwe ni muda mwafaka wa kuondoka kwa kamati hizo tunabakia na kamati chache ambazo tunaweza kuzisimamia na kwa kufanya hivyo ndo tutakuwa tumeweza ku strengthen community health system asante sana mwenyekiti thank you very much so uh, i think the main responses here were about the community development as uh, dr mbando has raised and uh, this has been agreed that this was an uh, something we should do, adopt in the new strategic plan and we should work together and also the issue of the committees we have to make sure they are aligned at all level and they feed to each other so uh, thank you very much i would like now to ask to move on to the next one after your hard work over the last three days you managed to discuss and come with a number of priorities that will go forward and inform the preparation of the sector policy meeting so here i'm doing the first part of summarizing the priorities that you have identified and they've been kind of financed by the secretariat but they will uh, continue to be refined before the policy meeting and you'll be involved in one way or the other so so we look at the governance governance priorities too have been uh, seen to be taken forward a review of governance and stewardship structures so that also they should be from the community to the national level but also involving the private sector and uh, promoting gender the second is to strengthen the swap process to review and revive this includes to have a decentralized structure that similar structures happen at the district region and inform the national level for health financing uh, two major priorities have been identified and this will be to increase coverage and efficiency uh, of the prepayment schemes from the current level and maybe we need to set a target we are cognizant of the guidance given by the ps about the content of the improved chf but that uh, we have it for now and we have to continue uh, uh, seeing how it works the second is to strengthen resource mapping and resource tracking to better align partner funding there are some funding which are on budget some direct to project and whatever so the government will have to see all are uh, uh, appearing in this resource mapping for human resource for health 
is to formalize and support alternative hiring arrangement. We have seen the one of the major problem has been the shortage of HR in the f service delivery, but there's a, a glut of HRIH in the community waiting to be hired. So alternative hiring mechanisms, including innovations like the MCAPA fellows can be adapted. The second there is to recalculate the staffing needs uh, so that to, uh, to address the mismatch between need, supply, and demand so that we can update the HRH planning systems, including what was raised on the floor today about the establishment, which are outdated. The M&D and ICT group, uh, this uh, I remembered my former director, Kilima, told me the excellent should not be the enemy of the good. They were refining to have the excellent priorities, but they were overtaken, so this is what was being developed. I know they have some refined, we, we look at that. So two uh, priorities have been suggested for them, to develop healthcare 2.0 strategy, which is uh, we look at both technology and the content for better services. And the second one, to rationalize m and &E systems, to uh, aiming at reduction of workload. As you said, many people down there are spending much time on the uh, filling forms, but also use the data for decision making. Service delivery as an ongoing concern. Uh, you'll uh, agree that uh, it was difficult to come with less than one or less than three, so we have four, and uh, strengthening availability of medicine and diagnostic and the other commodities is very critical. A lot of um, uh, progress has been made, but there's a lot more needs to be done. Quality of care, we have various uh, uh, efforts of uh, quality improvement. They need to be integrated synergized and intensified so that they give the required result. To intensify rollout to national level, other uh, the measures were placed for reduction of neonatal mortality because this is a persisting problem. Uh, then to intensify adolescent uh, friendly services in, within the youth, uh, so it's youth and adolescent. For new challenges is to operationalize all levels, at all levels, the early warning systems, preparedness, response, and monitoring of emergencies uh, in line with the global health security agenda. The second one is community engagement and participation in NCD prevention and control. For community health system strategy, strategic priorities we have three strengthen linkages between community and health facility this is a, a major one the second one is a, to roll out this community based strategy which dr ama mentioned to be rolled out and operationalized together with the expanded revised uturo model inside it the third one is to strengthen strengthen social welfare system and structures for provision of equitable social welfare services. Uh, Mr. Chair, these are the uh, recommendations that come from your meeting and they will go to the policy meeting, but the the during this time before that we'll work together to get the the, the work done. So I would like to invite uh, Carol, uh, uh, Catherine to, to tell us on the next steps in the formulation process and on going to the planning. And I would like to thank you all for bearing with me for the last three days. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Maybe uh, to catch up with uh, where Dr. Ipuge has ended, customary actually, we usually ask the meeting participants 
to endorse these areas which were mentioned by Dr. Ipuge as our 28th Joint Annual Health Sector Technical Review Meeting. This time around, we have changed the names to the strategic priorities based on the review findings. So now there will be strategic priorities for the policy meeting. So do we endorse those ones as our recommendations to the policy meeting? Can you raise your hand if you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to take you through. <laughs> Sour. Sour. Okay. We have listed them, but I know as a procedure, we'll have to put in more meat into those areas which we have, we have written. And then here is the process which we are going to do. We have started it's a draft zero. So we are going to consolidate all ideas. You remember yesterday you had dropped in some paper after the gallery walk. So we are going to look into them. But based on the discussion which we've had since Monday, we strongly feel that those strategic areas which Dr. Puga has taken us through will be our um, 20th Joint Annual Health Sector Technical Review Meeting recommendations for the policy meeting. And we expect by next Friday, we'll have a document which we are going to share with all of you for a second endorsement. And we'll give you one week to give us feedback. After that, we are going to incorporate the inputs which you have given us and we'll take them forward to other levels for more consultations. Because you see this, they have to be shared between the government. As you can see, there are different levels which has to support the implementation. But also, since we do work with different partners, we have to see what will be the best modality to support their implementation. And you remember the second output of this meeting was to navigate how we are going to carry forward with the HSSP5 formulation. And as you recall, during my yesterday's presentation, I had indicated that we are going to have three phases. So what we have done, we have thought critically and identified what will be the key activities in each of the phases. So when you go to phase one, which starts in this October to December, we are going to collect your ideas. You remember this exercise which we did in the group work. It had two components, one for the HSSP5 and the second one for the policy commitments. So we are going to look at them again and to put them together. Then after that, they will guide us in the development of the concept note for the HSSP5. And also we are going to proceed with the appointment of the steering committee, the task force, the core team, but also find the modality to procure the consultants who will facilitate the process. And after that, we are going to share the documentation with the network groups, which is all of you, to get more ideas on how we should shape the concept note. Then after that, we'll have consultative meeting with the steering committee and all that. And in that meeting, we expect to have a second uh, consultative meeting like this one whereby we are going to do a priority setting. And after that priority setting meeting, we'll have a draft zero of the HSSP5. And we hope this will be out by December. And our phase two will be between January and February, whereby, you see when we meet in this forum for priority setting, we'll, uh, we are going to discuss also what will be the best modality for the technical working groups. So we will share with those technical working groups the work, the draft zero, to verify those priorities which were set during the phase one. And after that one, remember yesterday, we had a reality check. This is the engagement with stakeholders, but also to see what will be the fiscal space to support this HSSP5. And then at the same time, I think you'll agree with me, we'll have to continue the culture of having the costed um, plan. 
So we hope by then we'll identify a consulting firm who will help with the costing of the HSSP5. And after we do all that, we expect we'll have the draft one of the Health Sector Strategic Plan 5 by February next year. Between March and April, we are going to have another big meeting where we would like to have the stakeholders' commitment. And this will cover the government, GPG Health, and the non-state actors. And we'll have a round of validation meeting across those stakeholders. And after that, we expect the final version of the HSSP-5 will be out by the end of April. So in a nutshell, this is a summary of the processes. Yep. I've finished my presentation. I don't know if we have any questions or any inputs to the two processes which I've shared with you, the policy meeting and the HSSP-5 formulation. Any question? Okay. <laughs> so, Dr. Ipuge. Maybe we continue this next. Okay. Sorry, I didn't know if Dr. Ipuge's moderation has ended. So now we'll proceed to the next agenda item, whereby we're going to have vote of thanks. We'll start from the DPG Health, then Paul Ralch, then the Minister of Health. So I'd like to invite Dr. Cho Ong to give us his uh, remarks. Welcome, Cho. Thank you, Catherine. Mr. Edward Mabanga, Director of Policy Planning, on behalf of Permanent Secretary Dr. Zainab Chowler, Ministry of Health, Community De Development, Gender, Elderly, and Children, Dr. Utuli Kapalogwe, Director, Health, Nutrition, and Social Service, on behalf of Deputy Permanent Secretary of President of his Regional Administration and Local Government, and the Directors of Government Business and Policy Coordination from the Prime Minister Office, Government Official of the United Republic of Tanzania, Representative of Civil Society, NGOs, and the private sector, fellow development partners, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, on behalf of development partners, it is really a pleasure for me to be here to make a closing remark and pass our gratitude to all those who made this event a reality and supporting the health sector Tanzania for the 20 joint annual sector technical review meeting. Now, Please give a round of applause for this. It's a so last three days, we all found out that the road to universal health coverage is not easy. It really requires a strong stakeholder collaboration and 
under the high level government leadership. And we discussed a lot of several focus, a focus on good quality, preventive, promotive, curative services. We also discuss on ensuring the financial protection. We also discuss about universal health coverage on equity and gender perspective. So it is a critical part of the, this effort. What we see is we have a really a strong and allied stakeholders in this room. And we really appreciate, again, government of Tanzania effort in bringing all the partners together in this room. And especially this year, first time, we have regional medical officer, medical officer in charge of regional referral facility, and district medical officer. And we really appreciate to the Ministry of Health and Government of Tanzania. We're all excited to be with all you for the past three days to learn our success. There are so many success we share as well as identify the barriers and weakness. And we have witnessed good and productive dialogues happen between the government and DPs. And in many cases, we also see that regional medical officer, district medical officer, and medical officer from regional father hospital, we have a multiple dialogue in place, both in the presentation as well as in the group work. We also see that civil societies are also part of these dialogues and private sectors are also part of this dialogue. We really encourage these dialogues and to take place and we wanted to encourage to continue and sh shape the development of HSSP5. We also managed collectively to come up with focus area for development of HSSP4, HSSP5. That will be able to respond to shifting contexts in achieving universal health. Now, during the discussion, we have noted our ongoing challenges, such as quality of care, management of human resource, like a high maternal mortality. We talked about chronic malnutrition. We also talked about sustainable health financing gender and equity, which all of us should strive to address. At the same time, we also need to respond to shifting contexts, such as non-communicable diseases, urban migrants, pandemics, antimicrobial resistant problem, and climate change that require our urgent attention to response in order to build a stronger system for the future. And we thank you again for your hard work and contribution throughout the presentation as well as the group works. DP would like to thank the Permanent Secretary, Dr. Chawla, Ministry of Health, Community Development, Gender, Elderly, and Deputy Permanent Secretary and on behalf of uh, Dr. Untuli Kapalongwe from Piora for their leadership over the period of this work and Thanks all the peoples in the room who contributed. We congratulate again and thanks the core team lead, Dr. Yadku, Dr. Dan Brun Peterson, Dr. Rutasha Dadi, and team members and consultants who have conducted the recent midterm review of the health sector strategic plan for and health basket fund and one plan two. And without their hard work and dedication, we couldn't have these key reports to guide the next HSSP. So let us have a round of applause for that. <laughs> We'd like to have a special thanks to Dr. Catherine Joaquin, Head of Health Sector Resource Secretariat. We know she had worked hard tirelessly. <laughs> and over the last year, on the midterm review with her team, and ongoing the joint annual review meet, technical review meeting, and we're really grateful to her. We would like also to thank to directors from all the ministries here in this room and regional medical officers, medical officer from regional referral hospital, district medical officers. We want to thank Secretariat who organized these meetings all the way back, and they've been tirelessly working uh, all three days. 
And we would also like to thank our um, facilitator or moderator, Dr. Ipugi. Thank you for the, your service for today. And finally, to participants and all invited guests in these rooms. On behalf of Development Partners in Health, we reiterate uh, one more, once more our full commitment to ensuring we reach all households in Tanzania with quality health care as we continue together to promote good quality uh, primary health care that is accessible to all. Asante Nikwa Kunisi Kailio. Thank you very much, Dr. Cho, for those um, vote of thanks. I would like now to welcome Dr. Ntuli Kapologwe, the Director of Health, Nutrition, and Social Welfare, on behalf of the Deputy Permanent Secretary, Paul Rauch. Mwishmwa Mwajikiti, naomba ni rusu mtatua speech yangu wa kiswahiri. Katibu mkuu, wizara afya, mandura jamii, Jinsia wazena watoto, Dr. Zainab Chaula, ambaye pia ni mwenyekiti ya kikawachetu, viongozi wote mliopo meza kuu, ndugu wa shiriki ya kikawiki, mabibi na mbwana, salamu alaikum. Awali ya yote lipendo kuchukua fusei kumshukuru sana mwenyezi mungu kwa kweza kutufikisha siku ya leo na atimaye tunaelekea kuitimisha kikawu muhimu sana kwa sekta afya, ustawi ya jamii na lishe katika nchi yetu. Mshumo mwenyekiti na kushukuru sana kwa uongozi wako wa kikao hiki pamoja na kwamba wana majukumu mengi lakini umeweza kutuongoza vizuri sana na hatimaye leo tunaweza kuitimisha kikao hiki muhimu sana Mshumo mwenyekiti sisi kama ofisi ya rais Tamisemi ikiwa ni wizara nayo sika na utekelezaji wa sera kwenye ngazi za secretary za mikoa na almashauri Tumefrai sana kwa namna ambavyo tumeza kukiendesha kikao hiki na hatimaye kuja na recommendation kadha ambazo tutenda kuzifanyia kazi kwa kipindi cha mwaka unaofuata. Nipende kusema tu kwa niaba ya katibu mkuu ofisi ya rais samisemi na kwa niaba ya yangu mi binafsi mambo yote ambayo meza kujadiliwa katika kikao hiki tunapokea na tutaenda kuyatekeleza inavyotakikana ofisi ya rais amisemi pekee haiwezi tunahitaji ushiriki wa wadau mbalimbali ili tuweze kutekeleza mambo tuliyokubaliana hapa kwa kiwango kinachotakikana kwa hiyo mheshimiwa mwenyekiti ni seme tu kwamba sisi tumewapokea na tuko tayari kuenda kutekeleza mambo yote ya kisera na kitalamu ambayo yameza kujadiriwa hapa. Na nipende kwa kishia tu kwamba mwakani tutakafu kwa tukikutana katika kikawa kama hiki, basi tutashudia mafanikio makubwa ya mambo mbalimbali ambayo tumeza kubaliana hapa. Mwishu mwenye kiti kinikawa chako, mimi nisiwa na mengi ya kusema zaidi ya kuchukua fusa hii kuishukuru sana wizara afya, Kwa shukuru wa dao wetu, kwa shukuru wa jishiriki wote, kwa ushiriki wao katika kikao hiki. Ni wakaribisha sana ofisi ya Raisi Tamisemi, tushirikiane kujenga nchi yetu. Asante ni sana kwa kunisikilizi. Asante Dr. Ntuli kwa nasaha za shukran katika kikao hichi sasa kwa heshima na staadhima naomba ni mkaribishe Dr. Zainab Chaula Katibu Mkuu Wizara ya Afya Maendeleo ya Jamii Jinsia na Watoto Idara Kuu ya Afya ili aweze kutoa neno la shukrani pamoja na kutufungia kikao chetu karibu mama
with all due respect, let me stand. Good afternoon to all of you. How are you? First and foremost, let me apologize for missing the important session because I had an emergency call. So I was to respond it, lucky enough. The call is all about health issues. I was with Vice President, with my brother Seymour, Dr. Grace, discussing on how best we can improve the quality services at our health facility, basically at the regional referral hospital. It was very positive, and also I managed to convey the sincere greetings from this group and this good work which is going on at this conference. So also accept this greeting from Vice President. I know you had a very good time. And for sure, we will manage to have something differently after this long two days of sharing, but full of facts on incoming Health Sector Strategic Plan 5. So before going to the closing remarks, I would like to thank you all for your contributions, your presence, your time, technical advice, but more important to those who are going to mention their names for financial contributions that managed to make this happen. So let me start by giving this appreciation for the entire work which has started way back since 12 of March. Almost six months, people there in the field compiling the report, giving us the recommendations through the discussion, but also to share, as I said earlier. So let me start by recognizing WHO under the leadership of Dr. Tigesti Mengesu. We can continue here. There's no protocol. Is it accepted by protocol? <laughs> <laughs> Sante Sana. Sante Sana. Sante. Next is UNICEF. Our DPG Chair Troika So Young. Next is UNFPA. I think you are tall enough. Can we hear? Next is UN AIDS.
ajiandae Irish Aid. Dani Chambers ajiandae. Swiss Embassy <laughs> World Bank World Bank Chio Chio San Koika Koika So also let me acknowledge the contribution made to Dr. Catherine Joachim, we are all agreed that she has been working tirelessly, day and night. <laughs> she, is a, she is a champion of this success story with her team with the steering committee. Let me hug in front of you. Thank you, sir. Okay, now that's good.
Dr. Ntuli Kaporogwe, Director Health Services Permanent. President Office, Regional Administration, Local Government, Dr. Kyo, DPG Health Troika, Dr. Tigesi Mengistu, WHO Representative for Tanzania, Dr. Ellen Senkoro, Representative from non state Actor, Dr. Josephine Balati from CCOs, Directors, and head of section, Minister of Health, President of Office, Regional Administration, Local Government, all RMOs and DMOs, medical officer in charge from Regional Referral Hospital, my dear development partners, health basket fund partners, representative from private sector, civil society, the first based organization, all staff from all ministries, invited guests, Mabibi na Mabwana, Assalamu Alaikum, Tom Sifu Yesu Christo, Bwana Yesu Asifiwe. Awali ya yote naomba tumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu, Mwingi wa Rehma na Mkarim, kwa kutuwezesha kufika siku ya leo, and in order to share with our Partners, allow me first to thank you all and we switch the language probably to make life easier to Dr. Ipuge, who is our translator, and to acknowledge his leadership at this important forum. I don't know where is he. Dr. Ipuge, very happy. Asante sana. You will agree with me. He did a very fantastic assignment. And he managed. <laughs> His award will come later at the next coming uh, forum. And I'm sure he will also continue to be our moderator. Thank you so much, Dr. Ipugi. <laughs> My dear people, as you all know, the main agenda of this meeting was to receive and to deliberate on the findings of the Health Sector Strategic Plan 4, 1 Plan 2, and Health Basket Fund Review. This meeting also enabled us to brainstorm on Health Sector Strategic Plan 5 or Strategic Directions, basing on finding from Health Sector Strategic Plan 5, and to formulate the policy recommendations for 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, the Health Sector Strategic Plan 4 review reports show that as a country, we have made major progress in many indicators, including reducing new born and child mortality, childhood malnutrition, and in the boat against communicable disease, including HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. Availability of medicine, improvement on quality of services, and healthy system infrastructure. The finding of the Health Basket Fund review showed that we are able to successfully decentralize and introduce innovation solution including direct health facility financing. As much as we are happy for the achievement attained, we still have a lot to do to meet the intended objective of Health Sector Strategic Plan 4. Target for some indicators we are not doing well, especially in the area of neonatal mortality, maternal mortality, adolescent health, and human resource for health. 
we are also continue to have regional disparities whereby some of the regions are left behind. During this meeting, modern ideas and approaches have already been presented. WHO described the new ways of addressing challenges in health globally and how health is central in reaching the sustainable development goals. In Tanzania, we embrace this approach through the ongoing work with which we have also seen in the Health Sector Strategic Plan for Mid-Term Review. The urban population traditionally have access to better health care, but now we see poor performance on some indicators illustrating the need to address the growing need of groups like the urban poor. These emerging challenges illustrates one of the other major issues we need to address. Governance and leadership, we need to reconsider and harmonize our structure and enhance coordination, not only internally, but also with donors, private partners, and others. We want to focus on accountability, transparently, and the participation to develop responsive and the people-centered governance from the community to the national level. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Ministry of Health, I would like to register government's commitment to continue advancement in healthcare. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and appreciate the contribution of development partners private health sector, CSOs, and NGOs in improving the health sector performance in Tanzania. I call upon all to continue working with the government to improve health status of all Tanzanians and play a very key role in implementation of what we have agreed upon. After saying this, let me announce the date for the coming annual, joint annual meeting to be on 19th November 2019. We choose this day or this date because we all know we have been discussing now and then would like to launch non-communicable disease program on 14th, but on 15th, we expect to have this high-level policy meeting on HARH. So we try to make the date probably to have a two days holidays, Sunday and Monday, so on Tuesday, please serve the date. We have already got approval from Honorable Minister, so we are good. So let us work hard to prepare this wonderful uh, coming joint annual meeting. It's only a month to have successfully preparation. So ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I would like once again to, congrat to congratulate all of you, but to thank every one of you for your contributions, additional value, and to make this 20th joint annual review meeting to be best of the best. And this is because everyone participated fully and especially to make this meeting differently is the presence of all regional medical officers, all DMOs, all MOs to be part and parcel 
of the decision made toward the policy recommendation. I would like to conclude. I would like to appeal for you full cooperation and commitment. I conclude by thanks, deepest thanks to the Secretariat for the wonderful preparation, but also moderating our social life, lunch, refreshment. And yesterday we had a very good time overnight. I commend for those who are there on behalf of the others uh, to celebrate the success story of senior season, citizen Thomas. who is in this country since the early 70s, almost 40 years, staying with us. This is a marvelous, we have to clap for him. We had a lot of support from Swiss, but specifically to Dr. Thomas, because even his internship at his medical career uh, completed here in Tanzania. He's a doctor by profession, but also is a doctor of doctors in Temo Ofu, Meditem Review. Thank you so much. <laughs> After saying this word, I would like to thank you all for your kind attention and wish you all the best and safe travel back home and the best of luck in your daily endeavor. Thank you all. Asante ni sana na mungu wabari. MC, you can proceed with any announcement if any. Sante Nisan. Yamani ya barini za mchana um, Likuwa naomba Wa staff think tank hapa mbele Waka mwone mwasibu pale nyuma Alafu kama kuna RMO, DMO Au medical officer nchaji yote amba japata malipu yake Pia hindi pale kwenye dawati ya mwone Joyce Karibuni Chakula pia kiko tayari karibuni sana